everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah, this is my husband Kevin, and we are winding down the gardening season and we're starting to pull some of the squash, the winter squash, out of the garden. And so we thought we'd sit down and share with you some of our successes and a lot of our failures actually from this year uh, in regards to winter squash. The number one thing that we learned this year about squash is that we have a lot to learn <laughs> about squash. Yes. This year, uh, we made some kind of last minute decisions about varieties uh, of squash that we were going to plant. And most of those came back to bite us right in the butt. Yes. Uh, after we had planned out our garden, we realized that we had one extra row kind of right in the middle of the garden that we didn't have a plan for. And uh, we realized that at that point, we didn't have a lot of winter squash planted. And so we decided to look for some to experiment with. Uh, we were short on space because it was in between rows. So we decided to look up some bush variety of winter squash. Uh, I pulled out the Baker Creek uh, seed catalog because that is very close to us. We wouldn't have to order anything online. We could just run over there, get the seeds and get back. Um, and so we decided on four different varieties of bush winter squash. Um, and to be honest with you, most of them didn't work out. Right. I would say for sure there's two of them that we'll never plant again. Uh, the other two um, are kind of up for debate depending on maybe if we could plant them kind of away from the garden a little bit. Right. We might try them again. Uh, but. Well, let's just talk about some of the problems that we had. Well, before we move on to problems, we did uh, grow two varieties in the rest of the garden that are like standard, just vining uh, right. winter squash. And we have those over here. So these four are the bush, the bush varieties. These two are the standard vining varieties. Right. And the, the vine varieties, uh, which we've done in the past, um, did really well. Overall, they did well. Yeah. yeah. They, they still had some problems with uh, squash bugs, um, but I think most of the problems that they had with squash bugs uh, were caused by the bush varieties that we did uh, one row over in the garden. Right, so let's just be really clear, okay? We had a terrible problem this year in the garden, especially with these squash, with squash bugs and the vine borers. Right, and, and not just uh, not just a lot of bugs, but like a lot of bugs. I mean, we've never experienced uh, squash bugs like this ever in our lives. Uh, there was absolutely nothing we could do to no. keep up with them. It, um, you know, initially we tried to just find as many as we could and pick them off. Uh, that, I mean, just, there was no way. We would have had to been out there 12 hours a day. Right. It was an epidemic. Right. It was awful. So really, all of these plants had to just survive on their natural resistance to squash bugs if they had any. Right. And I think we did a video uh, earlier in the year uh, while we were in the middle of that problem. So I'll leave a link to that up there. Yeah. So really, uh, they either made it or they didn't. And so let's talk about the four bush plants, which really was the source of the problem. Um, and how each one did. Right, let's start with the worst ones first. The worst one for sure was this bush variety spaghetti squash. Um, it has a really long name to it. I will list um, all of these varieties down in the description of this video. Uh, I can't even pronounce the name yeah, of this. It's Mac something. Yeah, it's, it's, a, uh, it's two Polish words. This is a Polish kind of squash. Uh, it did terrible. I think it actually got hit both by the, the, the borer, the vine borer, and the squash bugs. We have not had one single squash that is salvageable, and the ones that we thought were okay and we brought into the house have started rotting from the inside out. Right. It was very discouraging. Yeah, they still feel okay, but when you cut them open, they're completely rotten inside. All of them are going to have to go to the pigs. Right. So, um, so this is one we definitely would not do again. Um, even though I think we have some learning to do, I don't think that the problems that we had with these were really anything we did wrong. Right. Um, I think they are just super susceptible uh, to the bug damage. Absolutely. So um, for us, uh, trying to grow all of our own food, 
um, just not worth uh, you know spending time on a variety that's going to be that susceptible to bugs. Right, and we really need varieties of squash that will do well um, over the winter. Uh, last year we canned some of our butternut squash and while it was successful to do that, when we've used them, it, we have really not liked the consistency of it. It's very watery, right. uh, mushy. We didn't like it at all. So right. It's good in soups and that type of thing. Right. Uh, but not really so good just to eat once it's been canned. Right, so we need varieties that are going to last over the winter. Right. The next variety that we probably will never grow again, uh, it is called Kakai. I'll put that in the description. And I chose this because I'm really interested in finding a pumpkin that has a hull of seed. Um, and it's just, I just, that's just what I want. Uh, and these guys were very susceptible, obviously, to the bugs. And we've only had about 50% um, success rate actually getting them into the house and not having them rot. And out of four plants, we've gotten six pumpkins. Right. Yeah. I, I would definitely say, just based on how the plants did overall, um, even before the bugs got really bad, the, the plants just, they didn't seem to do really well. Right. Um, I don't know if it's our environment or what it is, but... Um, yeah, I would agree these are probably out for next year. Right. The next on the list here, these are baby blue blue hubbards. And uh, we chose these because blue hubbards are super popular, but they get really big. Uh, so we wanted to try the baby ones because as a family, we're not going to be able to eat a 20 pound uh, squash in one sitting. These guys were prolific. They put on a lot of fruit um, and those that grew fast and hardened fast, developed fast, those survived. But right. the plants overall uh, were hit hard by the bugs. Right. So, uh, like I said, the, the squash that, that grew fast, developed fast, those we've been able to bring into the house. Now we have 10 of these in the house that have survived. Right, that's off four plants. Off of four plants. Now, this is a variety that we kind of picked last minute. Um, and after doing more research, uh, of course, after the bugs got bad, we did more research about it. And this is actually one of the worst varieties. Uh, the Hubbard squash in general are one of the worst varieties for attracting squash bugs. Squash bugs. Mm -hmm. So uh, we didn't know that when we planted them. And I really, in my gut, kind of feel like these right here are the root of most of our squash bug uh, troubles for this year because most of the bugs started on these plants and then spread to everything else. Right. Uh, the next squash is the table gold acorn squash. And uh, these guys, we had, a tr we had trouble up front with the vine borers. We actually had to replant two or three of the seeds because the, the, uh, the young plants got hit and died, so I replanted. These guys are also very prolific. Uh, and those that reached maturity quickly survived and came into the house but those that lingered really got hit hard. Right. Uh, another drawback to these plants is the uh, outer shell area must not be very hard because we've had a lot of bugs be able to bore inside of them and then rot them from the inside out. Right. We've had a lot of these come into the house and they're doing okay. Um, probably 12 or more of them are in the house ready for us to eat. Right, I don't think they'll make it over winter. No. They seem, um, like, like Sarah said, the, the outside seem pretty soft. Um, now, the one nice thing about these is you can grow these as either a summer squash or a winter right. squash. Mm -hmm. Now, we tried to grow these as a winter squash and let them, you know, go to maturity to bring them in the house. But we could have picked these when they were about half this size and used them like a zucchini or like, you know, like a summer squash. So, um, that's why I put this one on the maybe list because I would give it another shot but pick them when they're young and right. use them fresh over the summer. Yeah, another thing that I discovered after I went back, I looked at reviews on the Baker Creek, Baker Creek website on this and people had said, number one, it doesn't store well. Number two, it's not a sweet winter squash so it's gonna be on the bitter side um, and definitely better as a summer squash, like Kevin said. Right. So those were all the bush varieties. These were our last minute choices. And I think that we kind of, you know, it bit us in right. the end to, to make these tasty right. choices. Now the good part is it's also inspired us uh, for this winter 
to spend a lot of time researching squash varieties uh, that are uh, more hardy, um, more, you know, less prone to getting uh, bug damage. Um, so that's going to be something this winter while, you know, you're just getting that itch to get out in the garden and start planting. It's going to be something that we can spend some time researching and hopefully find some better varieties for next year. One new thing we're going to try next year is actually mixing up where we plant our uh, winter squash plants. Not in the garden. We're going to try some new spots all together. Definitely not planting any squash in the current garden location next year. Right. No we way. Yeah, we are making an entirely new garden next year. Uh, if you haven't seen the video where we started on that, I'll put a link up there, but um, even in that new garden, the plan is not to try any of these winter squash varieties next year. Right. Uh, we're going to try them actually just kind of off. Uh, we might try some down by our pond. We might try some in just different areas on the property and just see how they do. Uh, we have a friend who kind of grows hers that way and it keeps those bugs out of the garden. Right. Um, and you know, you can plant a, a bunch of them and if you know some of them make it and some don't but uh, that's something we're going to try next year to just uh, hopefully give the garden a rest right. and maybe try to break the cycle of some of those bugs. Right. Now the standard vining squash we did the butternut wall thumb and we did the New England sugar pie. Uh, they did well overall. They did get stunted by the squash bugs but they recovered right. um, and ended up doing well. Lots of butternut squash still on the vine uh, ripening and uh, we ended up with six of the sugar pie pumpkins. Uh, I would have liked more but I'll take what I can get. They're in really great shape. Yeah they did really well. And again, I really think if we had not planted these, that these would have not gotten any damage at all from bugs. Um, I think all of the damage, I think all of the bugs started on these and mm -hmm. then spread to other things. Right. So um, that's something, you know, we need to learn for next year. Absolutely. So we need your help, you guys. We need names of winter squash plants that have done well for you. It can be an heirloom variety. It can be a hybrid. A bush or vining. We need ideas from you so that over the winter we can start planning our garden for next year. Yeah, you guys gave us some great advice on our tomatoes yes. uh, when we did a similar video talking wow. about which tomatoes did well and which ones didn't and we really appreciate it. We take lots of notes and that will help us a lot for next year. So you guys, if this is your first time on our homestead, uh, we sure do appreciate you uh, coming to visit. Uh, we hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Uh, if you're one of our traditionalists, uh, hey guys, this is the time. We need your help once again. Yes, please. So don't forget also to share this video on all of your social media so that uh, your friends can help us as well. And until next time, thanks for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.